Thank you so much, Cassie, for helping me. I really think I'm ready to help explain the dietitian to our neighbor now. I got all confused when we were talking yesterday. I'm glad I can help, Hazel. Why don't you practice before you go talk to her? And just so you're extra prepared. Okay, so I think I'll start off with, Hi, Beth. Rem remember when you saw me looking at the Bible story book yesterday? And you said it must be a fairy tale book because there's pictures showing the horses and the lions next to each other and the little girl petting the baby lion. Well, yes, I do. It's a nice fantasy. Well, I don't believe it's a fantasy. I believe it will happen one day right here on Earth. That's a nice thought, but a fantasy is just that, and a fantasy won't really happen no matter what your book says. My book is a book of Bible stories, and I believe it because the Bible says so. May I share some scriptures with you to help you understand why I believe this? Sure. The Bible tells about how one day the whole Earth <coughs> will be a paradise, and how all God's creation will reside for a while with the male lamb, and with the kid and leopard itself will lie down, and the calf and the maned young lion and the well-fed animal all together, and the mere little boy will be leader over them, and the cow and the bear themselves will feed together, their young ones will lie down, and even the lion will eat straw just like the bull, and the sucking child will certainly pay, play upon the hole of the cobra, and upon the light of the aperture of the poisonous snake, will a weaned young child actually put his own hand? It does say animals and humans will be peaceful together. I didn't know that. Yes, and it will all happen because of Jehovah God and who he rules. If you, learn, if you read verse 9, I think it will tell us. They will not do any harm or cause any ruin in the certainly be filled with the water the knowledge of Jehovah as the waters of covering the very sea. Well I can see the Bible speaks of peace, but verse nine mentioned the sea, yet no sea animals are mentioned in the other verse we read. What about them? If we read another scripture, Revelation five thirteen, they are mentioned. to the one sitting on the throne and the lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. So see, all of God's creations will not only live in peace under him, but will bless him and give him glory and creator of everything. Well, I can see you know what you're talking about and why you believe all this. I never knew the Bible said all that, and I'm happy you can back up your beliefs. Thank you. I hope I can do this for our neighbor now. I'm sure you'll be fine. I think I see you're in the garden now. Let's go try it out. Okay. in attendance agree that um, we have some outstanding young ones in our, our Theocratic Ministry School. Um, you did a, a 
fine job, Hazel. A really, really good job. Really good job. In particular, I, I really appreciated um, how you yourself were convinced of what you were you're teaching. Uh, it came across in your voice. There was no hesitation. Uh, you were um, uh, thoroughly uh, engulfed in that idea of you yourself being in paradise, playing with those animals. And on page uh, 194 of our benefit book, it helps us to see that whenever we are fully convinced of the truthfulness and importance of what we are saying, it will come across. And it was very obvious that that was the case with you. It goes on to say that when we are convinced, then we can help others to be firmly convinced about what we are saying and teaching. And I'm sure that if that were to play out, yes, in fact, the, the friend of yours that you would have been teaching would have become convinced themselves because of your conviction. So we really appreciate your talk. You did an excellent job, and we know you're going to be a fine addition to this church house ministry school. Welcome aboard. We'll now give our attention to Brother Morris, who will help us to see why none of the demons are atheists. 